Okay guys, so my fan motor went out and what I did first was replace the capacitor and I just literally smacked the fan and stopped. It wasn't working when I replaced it and then it worked. So I was like, cool, worked for about two days, then it stopped working again. So I went and got one of these and this is a universal fan motor. This is what uh, the OEM fan motor is, and there's literally only three wires on it. The universal comes with four. Well, it comes with a lot more. These two are the directional wires, so they come connected like this, and I believe if you swap them, it will spin opposite. Now, I already tested it, and it's spinning clockwise, and I wrote this arrow to indicate um, I needed it to spin clockwise because the way that the fan is directed on my OEM one, it's scooping the air upward. That's how the AC fan should work. So if you flip that on that other side, it's spinning clockwise. So that's all good. I'm not gonna mess with this. Probably gonna tape it up somewhere and get it out of the sun. This is the ground. I'm probably just gonna ground this this one doesn't have a ground but I'm probably just gonna ground this onto the case somewhere or like on itself on the stud on the bottom here okay so obviously like when I pulled it out of the box I was like wait this is not the right fan but apparently so this is like a universal replacement this one works if you have two capacitors or maybe a different type of capacitor again I'm not really sure but this is how I got it to work for me. So every video you see, they're gonna tell you right off the bat, you don't need this brown and white wire here. Now this one actually did come with a, uh, discard this blue clip here or a connector here, but this came like this with this connector on the end here. Focus, focus, right here. As did this brown wire right here, just the solid one came with that red clip as well. So I'll get to why I cut both of those off later, but basically this one gets capped. So if you look at the wiring diagram on this one, the brown and white is on the bottom and it's a secondary capacitor wire, I think but that line on the bottom says that the capacitor will connect to, you know, one or two or both of them. So I just capped the brown and white. And the brown, I'm running straight to my other brown. And that just kind of worked out because it kind of turns yellow here from the sun, but trust me on this one. It's this wire and this routes to my capacitor and in the back there, it's hard to see, but it says fan top right. The one in the bottom is my common and the one in the top left is my hermetic or herm. I think that's what it stands for, hermetic. Anyways, next we have this white one. Now, there's a lot of trial and error. I basically figured out that this has to route to the purple. And let's go back to the diagram. I routed purple to the white and it says it needs to go to 208 to 290 volts. And it points upward to line two. Now, I don't really know. That wasn't really help too helpful to me. But I know that purple came up to my capacitor to the common. And then it has this red that jumps all the way down to my line two. Now, this is what's called a, um, a contactor, I believe. Now, your line one is gonna be on the left side in my case. And then your line two is gonna be on the right. So that's what I did there. Basically, it's going through the capacitor and just hopping back out and going to line two. And then finally, 
again the black on black will just worked out for this motor but I took the black and one more time go to the diagram and that's like I'm just trying to figure stuff out here but black just said it says line right above it so originally the black went to the control board up here to DF2 so I just connected the black to the black ran that up here now I believe what it is is that um, you know obviously the brown is your fan wire and that needs to go to the fan part of the capacitor now the purple in this case the white and again if we look at the diagram the white says it needs to be connected to voltage so that's why I'm running the white now it turns into the purple and then jumps down to the contactor and these wires at the bottom here or is it that's what's giving me my voltage it's coming from the house here so i'm like that's the power it needs to that's what the, you know i'm giving it the white it's voltage that it wants and then the last one is the black and that's just it needs to go to the line i don't know what that means but it's going to the control board and again i already tested this this works another thing i was concerned about is that these wires here from the universal fan they're smaller like in terms of thickness and so i was like worried about that at first but turns out that looking at these wires somewhere on here it says 18 American wire gauge. And then actually I looked on here on these thick wires as well. And they're also 18 gauge wire. It's just the rubber molding, the shroud around them is just thicker. So I personally uh, feel safe doing the uh, bigger wire to the thinner wire because I think it's the same inner diameter of the copper. So there's that. Okay, so let's try to test this out here so just come inside do your thermostat turn it on make sure it's on heat and make sure that it tries to fire up all right so obviously there's no fan on this thing it's in a pretty decent sturdy location somewhat now i have the the disconnect already disconnected when I was working on it. And all I'm gonna do is plug in the disconnect and make sure that my shaft here is spinning and that my wiring is all good. And it's pretty easy to tell. It's gonna be hard to tell on the video, but it's easy to tell which direction your shaft is spinning when you first see it fire up. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the disconnect. There we go. Motor's running. I'll just pull the disconnect again. And then go turn off your AC and looks like this thing is ready to go. And guys, one last thing I want to mention. Uh, this is like readily available in other videos, but when you're taking your fan off of the old motor, I think you want to make sure that the distance that it's sitting on the shaft is about the same. So I already measured it. It's hard to tell, but basically from the base of the shaft, it's about two and a quarter away from the base, right? So you just want to make sure when you pull that thing off that you come over and mark Oops. Now I was measuring the top on the other one, the up here. It's measuring to that plane right there. So from the base, now I'm not really sure if you should be measuring from here, but technically the base of the shaft here is this stationary plane right there. So I just came and I dropped in about maybe a 
two and an eighth or two and a quarter inch line. Well, if I drop it down right there, then just put that mark there and make sure it's sitting in the same spot relative to the OEM position.